Advanced Studies for the Adept. Blessings and welcome, my sisters and brothers, to Conscious Channeling of LL Research. This is the Law of One. Study Group. Messages of Love and Light from the Confederation of Planets in Service to our One Infinite Creator. We have several exciting topics. Today's question is to QO. What exactly is the time lateral of Earth? Does it indicate an illusion within a more real illusion, or is it like the hollow deck on Star Trek's fictional world? Then are all the stars and planets except Earth all holograms because Earth is in the time lateral? Or on the other end, if there was no such thing as a time lateral in the beginning, what would the third density Earth be like? Please explain, QO. We are those known to you as the principle of QO. Greetings in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator in whose service we come to you this evening. We wish to thank you for the privilege of being included in your circle of seeking and are happy to share our opinions with you about the queries with which you come this evening. At the end of the second minor cycle of harvest in third density upon planet Earth, the Council of Saturn became concerned that the solar system as a whole had been able to bring to a normal graduation only one of the planets in this particular solar system that you call the Sun. The Council decided that it would be helpful to create a time lateral and to place the planet under strict quarantine. It was further decided that all of those entities whose third densities had been interrupted be brought to Earth to join Earth's cycle leading to harvest. Accordingly, the metaphysical or time-space portion of your third density Earth was reconnected to the main track, shall we say, of the progression of time-space and space-time in such a way that it was as isolated and protected a hotbed or greenhouse for growing souls as could be devised. It is precisely as real as the main track of time-space, and indeed it is equal to the main track in time-space. It is a carefully created alternative track which naturally feeds back into the main track of time-space and space-time progression. At the conclusion of this time lateral, then the population of planet Earth shall be ready to take advantage of the opportunity to end the third sub-cycle of harvest and greet the end of that 76 or so thousand year cycle that is a third density cycle in its completion. Because this is not a physical alteration, but a metaphysical alteration, there is no physical marker for the end of the time lateral. And indeed, this time lateral has been very successful compared to experiments in the past. The accumulation of awakening interest in altering the course of the vibration of planet Earth has been late in starting, but has rapidly spread and gained strength in all parts of your globe, in all peoples, cultures, and places. Your world is truly waking up. Again, because of the fact that such activities are primarily metaphysical, 
rather than physical in nature. The effects of the improvements in the vibration of planet Earth are not physically obvious, except for the fact that your Earth is still functioning without the need to experience a pole shift. It was thought at one time to be probable that your Earth would, by the end of your 20th century, have found it necessary in order to express the heaviness of the vibration of Earth to destroy the Earth once again in terms of it being habitable for human life, as you call your third density species. However, the work of many groups such as this one has created the possibility of a strengthened and lengthened track in the time lateral so that the maximum number of entities may awaken and choose whether to serve others or to serve the self before the time of such choice has passed. Once again, there will be no physical change when this time has passed, there will only be a change in the core vibration of the atoms of your universe. Atom by atom, cell by cell, being by being. You have asked if the experience of the time lateral is like the hollow deck. And we would say that indeed, whether you speak of the time lateral that you have experienced with its careful isolation and insulation from the full spectrum of thought available in the infinite creation of the Creator, or whether you speak of the main track. You have the same material and one single agenda for moving forward and fulfilling your hopes for progress within your present lifetime within third density. May we ask if there is another query at this time? We are those of QO. Yes, QO. The second question is, in such a vast Milky Way, did the time lateral experiment happen in other planets before? If so, are the results always positively successful? We are those of QO and are aware of your query, my brother. Such experiments have occurred from time to time in the past, and the results have been checkered. There is perhaps nearly an even division between those experiments in which the various grouplings of entities upon the planet turned from strife to a more unified view of the planetary population as one tribe, and those that were not able to achieve graduation in either polarity. Some of those experiments succeeded. There have been other attempts at, shall we say, cleaning up the energies of an entire planetary system where it was not possible to bring entities into one united spiritual being that could be called a social complex. The difference in planet Earth's experiment is that the Sublogos chose an experiment which was extremely rich in the full play and travel of free will, so that the veil was quite thick and almost impenetrable. This heavy veiling and full play of free will has resulted in entities turning not to the Creator, but to their own intellects and to their own abilities to find solutions to what they perceive as challenges or problems. In previous experiments, the veil was thinner because there was not so 
heavy a veiling, and there was not so much free will. The nature of third density entities upon your planet is, therefore, somewhat more primitive or has a tendency to remain primitive longer than on planetary experiments where the veil has been thinner and it has been more obvious to entities by virtue of the thinning of the veil that all are one. In the absence of any hint from the outer world that all entities are one interconnected being, the tendency has been upon planet Earth during this cycle for entities to find reasons to separate rather than unite and to disagree and come to embattlement rather than seeking with all diligence for points of commonality that become a consensus for gradual and global change. At this point, we can say that the probability is that your experiment shall, to some extent, be successful. The outcome which those of the negative polarity in higher densities would like to have occur upon planet Earth is that the majority of entities upon planet Earth decide that they are only safe and in proper spiritual alignment if they can live in fear and continuously find enemies to fight in order to express the feelings of winning the day and controlling what is seen as available sources of power. And we mean this not only physical, but also metaphysically. If a planetary social complex become involved in what you call a knot of fear, then they might voluntarily choose not to rejoin the main track. This would mean that this particular planet would be locked in a permanent third density cycle without the third density energy needed to progress. This would make this planet a slave planet in which entities fought and suffered endlessly and created food for the fifth density entities who have long eyed this planet with greed and the hope of conquest. Again, we cannot know the outcome of that which is completely at your free will. We can only tell you that the probability, possibility, vortexes have greatly opened in a favorable way within the past generation or half century of this planet's history. Things look hopeful, shall we say, that the rapidly increasing awareness of the need to choose a better way than strife for relating to one's fellow beings is needed. And as this realization spreads, and as the hunger for true peace, union, and love among all people grows, there is very likely to be a positive outcome at the end of this time lateral. May we ask if there is another query at this time? Yes, the third question, QO, is... Evolving to the fourth density seems a distant goal. Is there a simple way to measure how close we are to the threshold of the fourth density? Living on earth, by faith alone, are we prone to losing our faith? What spiritual principles are involved? What practical advice can you offer?
We are those of QO and are aware of your query. Your question is in two parts, and so we would prefer to respond in two separate communications. Therefore, when we conclude our thoughts upon faith, we would ask that you repeat the first part of your query. We would like to respond to your question upon faith first. My brother, faith is that which is a product of the use of will to choose to know that all is well. It is not faith in anything. It is not tangible. It is not measurable or quantifiable in any way. Yet all entities know what faith is because when they see it, they are drawn to it, transfixed by it, and blessed by the light that is expressed from faithful eyes, faithful voices, and faithful hands. The spiritual principle involved is very close to the beginning of creation. For the principle involved is a mature understanding of the function of free will and the structure or makeup of your mind, body, and spirit in third density. Because of the thickness of the veil, it is indeed not only difficult but impossible to prove any reason for faith. Faith is truly faith. It is not faith in something proven. No matter how religious leaders like to use logic and words to create an atmosphere where they may convince believers that there is only one tortoise path to follow in order to find salvation. Indeed, faith is born within each entity's heart as one decides or chooses to rest without varying in the vibration of absolute faith that all is well. It is an activity and a choice which is strengthened as it is used. Like any muscle, it gets stronger with every repetition. There are those strains within entities which would prefer not to be powerful. There are ways of thinking endemic to the human condition, shall we say, that would like to lean upon an outer support, such as that which uh, religion offers. And to our way of thinking, all such endeavors are potentially helpful. We always encourage entities to seek amongst the various ways of seeking the Creator that are present upon your planet to find a good fit for outer work, such as attending services with a group, acting as a spiritual community, studying a body of sacred literature, and other ways in which religion attempts to help entities mature spiritually. However, when entities give their power to others and say, I must listen to an intermediary, I must cast my hopes upon the kindness and compassion and saving grace of an intermediary, they have not yet grasped and accepted the responsibility for their own power. This instrument has been reading a work by an entity named Joshia, and this entity's work is very congruent with that point that we are attempting to make. The one known as Joshia says over and over that each entity makes its own reality. We agree completely with the one known as Joshia. You as an individual create your reality 
and you as a tribe of humankind create together a global or earthly reality. If you do not like your reality, you are able to change your reality. However, in order to change your reality, you must believe that you are capable of doing so. You must believe in the power of your own choices. As you polarize choice by choice by choice, we ask you to look for the light that is given to you. Seek out the wisdom that is available. Dig deeply within yourself to discover the heart of compassion that lies within you, inviolate and untouched by any human error. For you are one with the Creator, and that goodness and love which is the very nature of creation is at the heart of every cell of your body and every atom of each cell. Your very nature vibrates with the infinite love and light of the one creator, and you are a creator in your own right, not greater than any other creator, but able to choose your reality and to see it into manifestation. In a minor way, each entity does this. Entities choose to pursue various ends in a worldly sense and are able to see the results of those choices. However, we are talking about power at the level of changing the vibration of your being. For as you tune your thoughts and as you persevere in the outworkings of faith within you, you can become a part of the shift of thinking that lightens not only your vibration, but the vibration of the entire planet. It is the hope of many who watch this experiment with interest that entity shall become so on fire with love and so able to share that love in a pure way that does not create exclusion and the tendency to form cliques or to isolate themselves from others who think differently. That... In one sweep of relatively short time, the planet will come alive with the realization that it can, as a whole, find a way to express the love and the light of the one infinite creator in a way that is more congruent with those fourth density energies that are already a very big part of your third density experience. May we ask at this time for the remainder of the query to be repeated. We are those of QO. Yes, QO, evolving to the fourth density seems a distant goal. Is there a simple way to measure how close we are to the threshold of the fourth density? We are those of QO and are aware of your query, my brother. From the preceding answer, you may perhaps guess that we shall inform you that there is a very easy way to judge as to how close you are to fourth density. You are in fourth density, my friends. You are in third density bodies and so are not able to see the incredible, beautiful, infant, fourth density earth that interpenetrates third density at this time. However, far below the level of conscious awareness, you are more and more aware of your power your truth, 
and your beauty. The thinning of the veil has been occurring for some time as these energies interpenetrate more and more. At this time, there is virtually nothing of third density energy left. There is just enough energy left for a few more of your years in which entities can make the choices that will place them in a position to be able to graduate from third density to the density of love that is your fourth density. May we ask if there is another query at this time? Yes, QO. During my recent study, I found a small paradox regarding Latwi's home. I'm not being picky. I just wanted to make sure if dwelling in a sun body indefinitely is strictly a hallmark of sixth density beings. We are those of QO and are aware of your query, my brother. It is indeed so that it is the sixth density habit to dwell as part of sun bodies. Those of fifth density cannot sustain the vibratory purity necessary to dwell within the sun body. However, under the influence of the union of what you would call male and female energies, there is, in that state of consciousness that involves mutual love, each for the other, the possibility of moving into sun bodies in order to Express the fusion energy of sexual congress, light to light, and love to love. That energy cannot be sustained, and so when the expression of love has been concluded, fifth density entities move out of that level of vibration and into their fifth-density physical bodies, shall we say. Is there another query at this time? We are those of QO. I wish to know the opinions of QO regarding the Oriental wisdom. For example, the Buddhism, Taoism, Feng Shui, Chinese medicine, fortune-telling, etc. We are those of QO and are aware of this query. There are portions of this query which we must tread carefully in answering, due to our desire not to infringe upon free will. However, in general, we may say that, in our opinion, the religious practices and folk practices of the Orient are worthy, just as are the practices of the West. You may guess from what we have said earlier concerning churches that we feel that all Organized attempts to understand the infinite creator, the self, the one's place in the creation, are worthy. We would not rate one strain of pursuit of the truth as being more worthy than another. We note that some entities are drawn to intellectual discussion and contemplation, while other entities are more drawn to a pure emanation of love. Other entities are drawn to expressions of power and wish to align themselves with that power. Each religious practice and folk practice 
follows one of these three strains of study, either the intellectual and increasingly abstruse considerations of truth, the non-intellectual pursuit of insight, realization or gnosis, or the manipulation of the forces of the natural world for the benefit and safety of the self. Some religions have only one of these strains. Most have two, and some have all three. Lying beneath, above, on all sides of, and interpenetrating all of these structures lies that which may be called the truth. The truth lies within you. It is a creature without words. It speaks in silence. It gives information that is far richer and more powerful than any words. It is to that entity who finds his or her way to the silence that speaks that realization will come. To us, it matters not how that entity forms itself up or follows ways to tune itself in order to seek the truth. The fundamental matter of importance is to reach the heart of the self where the silence speaks. Is there another query at this time? In our last meeting, we discussed the red chakra and sexual energy. So I wish to ask QO some advice to raise or unblock the energy flow of the red chakra. Since most of my energy is supporting my brain, I think that my lower three chakras are weaker. I wish to boost the energy into my red chakra so that my energy flow can be raised from the indigo chakra to the crown chakra. We are those of QO and are aware of your query, my brother. Again, we shall need to tread somewhat carefully in our response in order to avoid infringement upon free will. There are misconceptions wrapped into the question that has been asked, and so we must spend a bit of time looking at the question from various angles. Firstly, we would correct the misperception that the reason for unblocking the red chakra is to enable the energy to move into the crown chakra. This is not correct. The reason for opening the red ray chakra is to bring power through into the heart. There is not a direct connection between opening the red ray chakra and opening higher chakras. It is something that must be done not once, but again and again. Indeed, the chakras can become blocked many times in one day, either by fear or by overactivity of desire. The second misconception within the quarry has to do with the comment concerning energy moving mostly to the mind. It is easy to think of the energy body as having some dynamic between mind and heart. However, in terms of the movement of energy through the body, there is not an entity which could be called mind. Rather, there are various kinds of energy within the energy body. The energy of the mind could be seen primarily to be that energy of the orange ray chakra and the yellow ray chakra, which together form what is known among your peoples as the ego. The ego, or the personality shell, 
dwells within those two energies. And so let us speak briefly of these two energies. The energy of the orange ray energy center is that energy in which the individual expresses its power as an individual. The orange ray chakra can be blocked by the feeling that one does not like oneself or does not feel that oneself is worthy. It can also be blocked by feeling that other selves are not likable or are not worthy. The yellow ray chakra is a powerful chakra within your system because you are in the yellow ray density. It is the chakra where you express your power as part of a group and as your humankind is a very social group interdependent upon one another for the necessities of life there is the tendency to find ways to think of oneself as powerful in third density ways such as religious groups birth families and mated families when you say that the primary power in your energy body is going to your mind you are really saying that you are blocking and or overactivating the orange ray and the yellow ray energy centers of your energy body this means that energy is not getting through to the heart in its full spate. In our opinion, working with the energy body is working with a structure which is made of feelings and ways of expressing feelings. When you are successful in keeping your rays open, then you become transparent to the energy flowing through. So it is not that you are doing anything when you have cleared your chakras, but rather that you have become an instrument, a wind instrument to be exact, so that the instruments may play you may blow the wind of spirits through your instrument, and you then create a song, a melody of love and light, from the impression of spirit upon your instrument. How many times this day have you considered the beauty of a thought? Indeed, how many times this day have you considered your thoughts carefully? We encourage a daily examination of those thoughts and feelings that have changed you this day, that have taken your mood and moved it either in a positive way, according to your judgment, or in a negative way. What has attracted you this day? What has repelled you this day? These are the images you wish to balance, so that you may see that you are all things, and that there is nothing that is foreign to you. Thusly, you may gather together your entire self and know its worth, despite surface appearances to the contrary. We ask that you consider, my brother and sisters, the possibility that dwelling within one chakra or another is not the goal of a spiritual seeker. Rather, the spiritual seeker's goal is to serve the one infinite creator. 
In doing so, all of the notes of this instrument shall be played. None of the chakras is more important than any other. They are all necessary for the functioning of the energy body. It is just as important to have a strong red ray or a strong orange ray as it is to have a strong indigo ray. It is important to do work in consciousness before you have begun to have a holistic view of your energy, valuing every aspect of your feelings. We use this term, feelings and or emotions, in a general way. Being unable to dig deep down beneath surface emotion to the archetypical rivers of emotion that are true or hold the truth within their flow. Think of it, maybe, in terms of vibration. Overall, your energy body vibrates at a certain rate. It is a conglomerate, rates, and the readout of that rate is your violet ray chakra. What you are attempting to do in opening the heart is not to leap from the heart into indigo ray, but simply to find yourself able to use the resources of the heart chakra which make work in consciousness ever more possible, as that heart not only opens but is persuaded by the constant tuning of the individual to stay open more and more. Finally, there is a habitual default setting of open heart and dependence upon the concept of love and a need to be a part of the principle of love and light upon planet earth. In such a way shall you be able to keep your system open and ready to speak the words of love to sing the melodies of wisdom, and to reach out hand to hand and heart to heart to each other as you practice being one in love. May we ask if there is another query at this time? Many questions are on my mind, but they are overridden by the appreciation of silence. Where the answers lie, we thank you, QO. We are those of QO and are aware of your desire for the silence. And so we shall leave you to that silence. Thanking this instrument. And this group for creating a circle of seeking and for inviting us to join. We hope that our humble words may be of some use to you. We honor you and leave you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We are known to you as the principle of QO. Adone, my dear friends.
We love you. Adone.